as a lot of you guys are aware, Dylan Mulvaney is probably the ultimate grifter. I think we can learn a lot from Dylan Mulvaney and his ability to be able to grift off of multiple different segments within the LGBTQ community, ultimately landing himself within the trans community, which has allowed him uh, to become basically a millionaire. I mean, he has uh, every single brand under the sun now supporting him once he reached 365 days of being a fake woman and, woman and wearing woman face. Um, now he is able to grift off the trans community and make millions and millions of dollars off them and uh, pretend to be a woman the entire time. Now, the funny thing is, obviously, you guys are aware of his situation with Bud Light. I've made a ton of shorts on it. I know a lot of you guys have commented on it. But now we have finally an official response from Anheuser Bush. And now they are going to basically say nothing in five or six paragraphs. And it's an insane apology. I don't even know if you would even classify this as an apology. I sure as hell don't because it's literally nothing. The guy says nothing. This is from the CEO um, of Bud Light. And he says, our responsibility to America. I'm going to read you guys the apology and then read you an article based on this apology and how a lot of people are responding to it because, again, it falls flat. Like, this this entire apology is BS. Nobody's believing a single word they're saying. Not only that, they don't say anything. It's literally political speak. They speak without speaking. It's such a stupid apology. But let's go over it and see what they have to say. So he says, as the CEO of a company founded in America's heartland more than 165 years ago, I am responsible for ensuring every consumer feels proud of the beer we brew. Well, I think you definitely failed on that aspect, but that's neither here nor there. It says, we're honored to be a part of the fabric of this country. Anheuser-Busch employs more than 18,000 people, and our independent distributors employ an additional 47,000 valued colleagues. We have thousands of partners, millions of fans, and a proud history supporting our communities, military, first responders, sports fans, and hardworking Americans everywhere. Okay. Get to the fucking point, because I guarantee you he never does. We never intended to be part of a discussion that divides people. We are in the business of bringing people together over a beer. My time serving this country taught me the importance of accountability and the values upon which America was founded. Freedom, hard work, and respect for one another. As CEO of Anheuser-Busch, I am focused on building and protecting our remarkable history and heritage. So we are, let's see, one, two, three, four paragraphs in. And this man has said nothing. <laughs> he has said literally nothing. A lot of words with no meaning. I care deeply about this country, this company, our brands, and our partners. I spend much of my time traveling across America, listening to and learning from our customers, distributors, and others. Moving forward, I will continue to work tirelessly to bring great beers to consumers across our nation. Brandon Whitworth. What did you say, Brendan Whitworth? You said nothing. What What was this even for? What was this entire uh, press release for? You literally said nothing. All you did was talk about how much you love the company. All you did was talk about, oh, America this, America that. And I get what you're trying to do, but you literally said nothing. You didn't even address the Dylan Mulvaney issue. You didn't even address it. You said nothing about it. So why would why is anybody ever going to take what he just said seriously? This is only going to piss off more people. More people are going to be pissed off by this. And now we have articles being written. And we have this one from the New York Post that says, Anheuser-Busch CEO offers flat apology following Bud Light's Dylan Mulvaney backlash. Anheuser-Busch top executive on Friday offered an apology flatter than a day-old Bud Light as the beer giant reels from the backlash over its sponsorship deal with the controversial transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney. Now, obviously, it's going to quote what was said in the actual article, which we just read. And it says, Withward finally broke his silence over the brewing controversy, but made no mention of the sponsorship deal with Mulvaney, which has led to calls for a boycott of the nation's largest beer company. He also didn't address reports that senior executives were kept in the dark about the Mulvaney rollout. Instead, Whitworth said he was focused on building and protecting a remarkable history and heritage. Moving forward, I'll continue to work tirelessly to bring great beers to consumers across our nation. The $132 billion beer company has seen its market value plummet by some $5 billion since the campaign was launched April 1st. That is insane, man. That is an insane number to lose that much money. My God, my God. And that's only in 13 days. 
That's only in 13 days. As of the time of this filming, it's April 14th. This launched on April 1st. And you know what the funniest thing is that this campaign launched on April 1st, man. April Fool's Day, seriously. And you're losing this much money over an April Fool's Day launch. Like, you guys should have just said, haha, it's an April Fool's Day joke and backed yourself out of it as fast as you can. But uh, no, you didn't choose to do that. Obviously, you chose to double down, triple down, quadruple down because that's what you guys do. Usually, you corporations that love using someone like Dylan Mulvaney. It says Bush distributors around the country have been feeling the fallout with many bars in conservative states from Tennessee to Wyoming refusing to stock Bud Light. I simply don't understand why they hired the person who was doing the marketing. I mean, if your target customer is Kid Rock and all of a sudden you decide to go RuPaul, that just doesn't make any sense at all. Oxygen Financial CEO Ted Jenkins told Fox News Digital. And that makes sense. I mean, obviously, Bud Light is more probably targeted towards more conservative people. And I remember the uh, VP of marketing trying to say, oh, well, Bud Light is dying. And the only way it's going to survive is by going after the younger generation. Well, guess what? Those people don't buy your beer, bro. They don't buy your beer. So you going after them, all you did was alienate. And that's what I'm, that's what I don't get. That's what I don't get. Why is it that a lot of these companies... Their idea of trying to get new customers is alienating their old ones. Why does that like why is that even a thing? And this is what Disney has done. This is what Marvel has done. This is what all these entertainment companies has have done. This is what a lot of woke corporations have done. And they always fall for that. And they always lose so much money for that because they alienate the majority of their current customer base to try to desperately tie in to, to as many younger people as possible. So let's say you gain a hundred thousand to maybe even a million new customers that are all young let's just give you the benefit of the doubt and say that's what you gain that means that you probably gave up millions of older customers who were with your product for so long just so you can get that hundred thousand or that million younger people seriously so you gave up 10 to 20 million older people to gain that 1 million younger people like that just doesn't make any sense and i know those numbers are made up but you guys get the idea because that's literally what happens it's kind of like what happened with the mcu look what happened with the mcu in the first three phases they garnered an audience that audience grew up they grew up loving marvel and then marvel all of a sudden in phase four said screw it we got to go after gen z and then they lost all the people who were loving marvel in the first place and now they're trying to garner a new audience with gen z and honestly Honestly, Gen Z is not even loving it that much, at least not to the level that Marvel needs. And that's why their viewership is so, so down. And sure, they could be playing the long game. Maybe they do succeed further down the line. But the thing is, you have to stay alive till you get there. And the money that you're losing is detrimental to the point where now you're questioning about whether or not you're even going to stay afloat. Because if we're to take what the VP of marketing said seriously, she basically said that Bud Light was on his last legs. So if that's really the case, losing $5 billion worth of market value is definitely not going to help the situation. It says Budweiser factories have also reportedly been targeted with a wave of threats this week. Well, if that's the case, that really shouldn't that shouldn't be that shouldn't be happening. That's not cool at all. There's no reason to be doing that. And uh, people who do that shit are just losers. On Thursday, the Los Angeles Police Department confirmed that officers responded to a call from the Anheuser-Busch facility in the Van Nuys section. A spokesperson for St. Louis-based beer maker told Patch that several other facilities across the country also received threats. Well, that's messed up. If they really are receiving threats, then people need to stop that nonsense. Because, again, they're going to feel it a lot more with their wallet than they would with any physical threat. Physical threats have no place here. You're supposed to be going after their wallet because that's what's really going to make these people make different decisions or just disappear entirely. I'm just being honest with you. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.